It's not a script. <laughs> We're gonna get through this, I'm gonna need something to drink. Just for jokes. A straw to smoke. Because I can. Hello everybody and welcome everybody. So have a read. Today I'm going to be reading something random. I could have hit an actual, I thank God had this printed today. I'm going to be reading the creepypasta Abandoned Discovery Island, or Abandoned by Disney, as it's called. Um, yeah, it's Abandoned by Disney. Yep, this is the right thing. Anyways, we're going to be reading it today. I can't memorize everything, considering, well, my brain has that problem. So, without further ado, let's read Abandoned Discovery Island, or Abandoned by Disney. You know, at this point, it goes either way, so taking a drink for that one. <sighs> Gatorade. All right, let's do this. Let's read the story. Some of you may have heard that the Disney Corporation is responsible for at least one real live ghost town. Okay. Disney built the Treasure Island Resort in Baker's Bay in the Bahamas. It didn't start as a ghost town. Disney, okay. Um, I don't know if that was real. I'm going fast. I'm, I'm taking a drink every time I screw up. At the same time, I'm probably gonna end up drunk off Gatorade by the end of it. Ugh. All right. All right. Disney's cruise ships would actually stop at the resort and leave tourists there to relax in luxury. This is a fact, look it up. I'm not looking this up, but if it's if it says so. Disney blew $30 million on the place. Yes, $30 million. Then they abandoned it, okay? Disney blamed the shallow waters, too shallow for the ships to safely operate. And there was even a blame on the, blame cast on the workers saying that since they were from the Bahamas, they were too lazy to work a regular schedule. I know this is an old creepy pasta, but even I believe this is BS. Ugh. Well, this is one of the classics, and it's better than Sonic EXE, so it gets a pass. Eh. Whatever. Okay. And they abandoned it. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. That's where the factual nature of the story ends. It wasn't because of sand, and it obviously wasn't because foreigners are lazy. Both are convenient excuses. No. I sincerely, sincerely doubt those reasons were legitimate. Why didn't I buy the official story? Because of Mowgli's Palace. Jungle Book. Uh, near the beachside city of Emerald Isle, North Carolina, Disney began the construction of Mowgli's Palace in the late 1990s. The concept was a jungle-themed resort with a large, you guessed it, palace in the center of the whole thing. Who might have guessed? Fudge, I lost my place. <laughs> oh, there we go. If you're not familiar with the character Mowgli, then you might better remember the story The Jungle Book. If you haven't seen it anywhere else, you know it as the Disney cartoon from decades past. Mowgli is an abandoned child in the jungle, essentially raised by animals and simultaneously threatened slash pursued by other animals. Anybody who's seen the remake knows this. <laughs> ah. <laughs> the remake was pretty good, though. I'll, I'll give that. Mowgli's Palace was a controversial undertaking from the start. Disney brought up a bought up a ton of high-priced land for the project, and there was actually a scandal surrounding some of the purchases. The local government claimed eminent domain on people's homes, then turned around and sold the properties to Disney. 
At one point, a home that had just been constructed was immediately condemned with little to no explanation. This just makes Disney sound like a-holes, honestly. The land grabbed by the government was supposedly for some fictional highway project. Knowing full well what was going on, people started calling it Mickey Mouse Highway. This is Disney we're talking about, so it's not totally out of the question. No, it's not at all the other question. Then there was concept art. A group of staffed shirts from Disney com from Disney Company actually held a city meeting. They intended to sell everyone on how lucrative the project was going to be for everyone. When they showed concept art, the, this gigantic Indian palace. Surrounded by jungle, staffed with men and women in loincloths and tribal gear. Well, suffice to say, everybody flipped their shimata. I'm not swearing for this. But, yeah, I can see why they would flip out. It's pretty much culturally insensitive. We're gonna need an extra one. Straw's going in there. Uh, we're talking about a large Indian palace, jungle, and loincloths. Not only in the center of a relatively wealth area, but also somewhat xenophobic area of the southern USA. It was a questionable mix at that point in history. I don't want to know the definitions of some of these words that nobody tell me. Um... One member of the crowd tried to storm the stage, but was quickly subdued by security after he managed to break one of the presentation boards over his knee. Dang! Disney took that community and essentially broke it over its knee as well. The houses were raised, were raised, red, 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 red. Excuse me. Razzed? I'm just gonna say razzed since that's easier. The land was cleared and there wasn't a darn thing anyone could do or say about it. Local TV and newspapers were against the resort at the beginning, but some insane connection between Disney media, right, between Disney's media holdings and the local venues came into play, and their options turned into a dime. Funny you mention a dime. So anyways, Treasure Island, the Palmas, Disney sunk those millions in and then split. The same thing happened with Mowgli's Palace. Construction was complete. Visitors actually stayed at the resort. The surrounding communities were flooded with traffic and the usual annoyances associated with an influx or lost and irate tourists. Then it just all stopped. Disney shut it down and nobody knew what the heck to think. But... They were pretty happy about it. Disney's loss was pretty hilarious and wonderful to a large group of folks who didn't want this in the first place. I honestly didn't give the place another thought since I heard it closing over a decade ago. I live maybe for four hours from Emerald Isle, so really I only heard the rumblings and didn't experience any of it firsthand. Then I read this article from someone who had explored the Treasure Island Resort and posted a whole blog about the crazy crud he found there. Stuff just left behind. Things smashed, defaced, probably ruined by the disgruntled former employees who had lost their jobs. I don't blame them. Heck, the locals from all around probably had a hand in wrecking that place. People there felt just as angry about Treasure Island as folks here did about Mowgli's Palace. I live in Oregon, so... Yeah, I don't live in California. <laughs> I don't live in Florida either, so... Yeah. Uh, God. Plus, there were rumors that Disney had released their aquarium stock into the local waters when they closed. Including sharks! Who wouldn't want to take a feasting? 
That's some merchandise after that. Me. I would. Well, what I'm getting at is that this blog about Treasure Island got me thinking. Even though many years have passed since its closing, I figured it might be cool to do some urban exploration at Mowgli's Palace. Take some photos, write about my experiences, and probably see if there was any I could take home as a memento. I'm not going to say I wasted no time getting there, because honestly, it took me another year after I found out that Treasure Island article to get around going up to Emerald Isle. Okay. Okay, that's, that's cool. Over the course of that, ye of that year, I did a lot of research on the Palace Resort. Or, rather, I tried to. Naturally, no official Disney site or resource made any mention of that place that had begun, that had been scrubbed clean. Scrubbed clean like these hairy, like these hairy legs. Yeah, I'm, I don't know why I made that joke. Um, even odder, however, was that nobody before myself had apparently thought to blog about the place or even post a photo. None of the local TV or newspaper sites had one word about the place. Though, it was to be experienced since they all had to swag Disney's way. They wouldn't be out there lauding their embarrassment, you know. Yeah, that sounds about right. Recently, I had learned the corporations can actually ask Google... For example, to remove links from search results. Basically for no good reason. Looking back, it's probably not that nobody spoke at the resort, but rather words are made inaccessible. I, again, I don't know if I blame them or not, but like... I'm going to be making that noise a lot. Yes, girl, lucky penny. Dang it, it landed tails! Alright. So in the end, I could barely find the place. All I had to go on was an oldest heck map I had received in the mail back in the 90s. It was a promotional item sent out to the people who had recently been to Disney World. And I guess since I had been there in the late 80s, that was recent. I didn't really intend to hang on to it. I just shoved it in with my books and comics from my childhood. I'd only remember it months into my research, and even then took me another few weeks to locate the storage bin, but my parents had shoved it all into. But I did find it. Locals were no help, and most were transplants who had moved to the beach in recent years. Or old residents who had just sneered, sneered at me Need rude gestures the second I managed to say, Where would I find Mowgli's? I know people hated it, but Jesus, you don't have to be mean to them. Just like, you could have just been like, I don't really want to talk about that place. Nobody really does anymore. I mean, that's what I would say. The drive t took me through in, in order... I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. A long corridor of overgrowth. Tropical plants that had run rampant and overpopulated. The area mixed with native species of flora that had belonged there and had tried to reclaim the land. I was in awe when I reached the front gates of the resort. Tremendous monolithic wooden gates. Who supports either... Oh, it looks like they've been cut from giant squid, squid, little, I'm not even going to pronounce that. How do you say that? The gate itself had been gouged, yeah, had been gouged in several places by woodpeckers and eaten away at the base by burrowing insects. Hanging on the gate was a sheet of metal some random scrap and with hand-painted letters scrawled in black, abandoned by Disney. 
Clearly, the handiwork of some past local or an employee who wanted to make some small protest. Yeah, well, you know what PC stands for in 2021 in my language? It stands for pointless controversy. Because that's what it should mean. Jesus. Okay. The gates were open enough to walk through but not drive. So grabbing my digital camera and the map whose flip side showed an, showed an outer layer of the resort, I set off on foot. The inner grounds of the place were just so overgrown as the entryway. Palm trees stood untended and ragged among piles of their own coconuts. Bailey whack his pee pee. I didn't actually hit myself there, thank God. Banana plants similarly stood in their own stinking, bug-riddled refuse. There was this sort of clash between odor and chaos. Or odor, order and chaos, not odor and chaos. I'm just thinking of smells at this point. As carefully planted rows of perennial flowers... Mixed with the obnoxious tall weeds and stinking blackened mushrooms. Ugh. That is not what well, that smells like, so I'm gonna take another drink. Ugh. That is if I can stop burping. All that remained of any outdoor structures were broken. Rotting wood and various charred bits of undefiable material. What was most likely an information booth or an outdoor bar was now simply a pile of assorted debris, chopped up by past vandalism and ravaged by weather. Sounds about right. I mean, it's abandoned. The most interesting thing on the ground was a statue of Baloo, the friendly bear from the Jungle Book, which stood in a sort of courtyard in the front main building. He was frozen by a jovial wave towards no one, staring into empty space with a silly, toothy grin as bird poop covered the whole sauce of his fur and vines ensnared his platform. They had to do my boy Baloo the bear like that. That's why you don't like nature, but I still touch grass. I'm good. Ugh. I approached the main building, the palace, only to find the outside of the building was covered in graffiti where the original paint had been peeled and chipped away. The front doors weren't just open. They had been taken off their hinges and were stolen. Who steals doors? Somebody better not come. If I ever threw a party, somebody better not come in with a door. Somebody's totally going to bring a door to the party. <laughs> there is something wrong with me. Oh my god. Uh. Above the front doors, or the gaping maw where they had been, someone had once again painted a bandit by Disney. I wish I could tell you all about the awesome stuff I saw inside the palace. Forgotten statues, abandoned cash registers, fully fledged secret society of homeless bums, but no. The inside of the building was so was so stark, so bare that I actually think people had stolen the molding off the walls. Somebody's definitely bringing the mold to the party. Anything that was too big to steal, counters, desks, giant fake trees. They were all resting at amid this empty echo chamber that amplified my every step like a slow rat-tat-tat of a machine gun. I had checked the floor plan and headed to all the locations that might seem, in a way, interesting. Okay. The kitchen was as you'd imagine. Indestru- in, indestru- indi- 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 
industrial food prep area with all the appliances and space. No expenses spared. Every glass surface was broken. Every door knocked off its hinges. Every metal surface nicked and dented. This, the entire place smelled like very old piss. No, just, just, no. The huge trees that are not even remotely cool now had row upon row of empty shelf space. Hooks hung from the ceiling, probably for hanging cuts of meat. As I stood inside for a moment, I noticed they were swinging. Each hook swung in a random direction, but their movements were so slow that it was almost impossible to see. I figured it had been caused by my footsteps, so I stopped one from swinging by clutching it in my fist and carefully letting go. But within seconds, I decided to swing once more. So this place is haunted. The bathrooms were much in the same state as the rest of the place. Just like the Treasure Island Resort, someone had meth... 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 meth Methodically? Method? Methodically? I don't even know. Smashed each porcelain commode with coconuts and other implements. There was about half, about a half inch of rancid, stinking, stagnant water on the floor. So I didn't stay there very long. Good. What's eyes at the toilets and the sinks? All besides the ladies' room. Yes, I went there. All dripped, leaked, or just ran freely. It seemed to me they should have shut the water off long, long ago. Should have shut off a penis long ago. Ha! This is the right page. Whatever. There were plenty of rooms in the resort, but naturally I didn't have time to look through them all. The few I did peer into were similarly simi similarly wrecked. There are some words that my mouth will not let me say, or my brain, and I didn't expect to find anything there. I saw that was actually a television or radio one room, as I really think I heard a quiet conversation coming out. Though it was like a whisper, probably my own breathing echoing, all, echoing in the silence or in just. Another case, the sound of flowing water playing tricks on the mind. This is what it sounded like. I don't believe it. <laughs> Sword unknown applies, what it says. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Your father told you. Unknown reply or possibly just weeping. Why are the ghosts staying here and they shut get out before I destroy them with my remote? Moving on. I know, I know, that sounds ridiculous, because it does. I'm just telling you what I experienced. Well, I thought there might have been something running in that room. Or worse, some people who had holed up in there and probably would have knifed me. Well, I mean, the story still was going on, so like... Back to the weed. Okay, at the front doors of the palace again. I figured I hadn't found anything of a note and had wasted the trip up. As I looked out the door, I noticed something interesting in the courtyard that I had apparently missed. Something that would have given me at least one thing to show for all my trouble, even if it was just a photograph. It was a lifetime, it was a lifelike statue of a python, maybe eight feet long. I coiled up and it's sunning itself on the soul right out of the area. It was almost time for the sun to start setting, so life is a perfect way for a photograph. I approached the python and snapped the photo, then I stood on my toes and snapped another. I moved closer again to get the details on its face. 
Slowly, casually, the python lifted its head, looked directly into my eyes, turned, and slithered off the pedestal across the grass into the trees. I'm not a fan of snakes, but I don't hate them either, but why was there a python? Why would you take pictures of it? Even I'm not suicidal like that. That, that's basically his head in a nutshell. Oh, God. All eight feet of it. Its long head disappeared into the woods before its tail even left a sunning spot. Dizzy had released all their exotic animals onto the grounds. Right there on my floor plan map was the reptile house. Should have known. I'd read all about the sharks at Treasure Island. Tre at Treasure Island. Or Isle. And I should have known they'd done this. I was dumbfounded, just utterly stupefied, you should. My mouth must have been hanging open for the longest time before I came back down to earth and snapped it shut. I believe a few times and backed away from where the snake had been, back towards the palace. Yeah, like a reasonable man should, because you're an idiot. Even though I thought it was totally gone, I still wasn't taking chances and backed my way into the building. I took a few deep breaths and... Slaps my own face to get myself in, right in the head again. After that, I looked for a place to sit down as my legs were feeling a, like, a bit like jelly at this point. Of course, there was no place to sit down unless I wanted to recline in the broken glass and dead leaf carpet or haul myself up onto a desk for of questionable re, re, reliability. I mean, yeah... I had seen some stairs near the palace lobby and decided to go have a seat there until I felt better. The staircase is far away enough from the front of the building to be relatively clean. Save for a st startling Im immaculation of dust. <laughs> Oh my god, that, that was funny. Uh, I sound like a sport model sometimes. Alright. <sighs> I pulled a wedge of metal off the wall once... Off the wall. Once again painted with the Abandoned by Disney motto I had become accustomed to. Okay. Become accustomed to. I, I placed the wedge on the stairs and sat on it to keep at least somewhat clean. The stairway led down below ground level using my camera flash as sort of an improvised flashlight. I could see the staircase ending on a metal mesh door with a padlock. A sign on the door, a real sign, read, Mascots only, thank you. To anybody who is a fan of old creepypastas, we all know where this leads. But to those who don't know, Let's keep moving. This perked up my spirits a little bit for two reasons. One, mascot, mascots only area would have definitely had some interesting stuff back in the day. Two, the padlock was still in place. Nobody had gone down there. Not the vandals, not the looters, nobody. This is the only place you could actually explore and perhaps find something interesting to photograph or wantonly steal. I had come to the palace essentially Agreeing with myself that it was okay to take anything I wanted because, hey, abandoned. Okay, I don't. Is that illegal? Is that illegal? It's technically Disney property, but it is abandoned. When you can't decide which part of the straw to smoke. <sighs> it didn't take much to bust the lock. Well, actually, that's wrong. It didn't take much to bust the metal plate on the wall that the padlock was hooked to. Time and decay had done most of the work for me. I was able to bend the metal plate enough to pull the screws out of the wall. Out of the work for me. And I was able to bend the metal plate enough to pull the screws 
out of the wall. Something nobody else had apparently thought of or hadn't been able to do at the time. The mascot's only area was a startling and, and very welcoming change from the rest of the building I'd seen. I, I'd seen, not I've seen. For one, every second or third flush of light overhead was illuminated, even though they flickered and faded randomly. Also, nothing had been stolen or broken, even if age exposure was definitely taking their toll. Tables had notepads and pens and clocks and even a punching clock on the wall, ready with the filled out time cards. Chairs were scattered around and there was even a small break room with an old static field television and long rotted out food and drink on the counters it was like one of those post-apocalyptic movies where everything is left in the state of evacuation i mean that's basically like 90 percent of those movies mad max no that's unfair to no, that's just... That's just unfair to compare it to, actually. No. As I walked the maze-like sub-basement of the hallways of the mascot's only area, the sights just became more and more interesting. As I went further, desks and tables were knocked over. Paper scattered and almost melded with a damp floor, and a large carpet of mold was slowly overtaking the the real rotting crimson floor covering. <sighs> yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, jeez, I spin on it. Sorry about that. Everything was just sort of squishy. Bow chicka bow wow. Or that's what she said. Screw it. It works either way. Anything would disintegrated into mush when I applied even the least amount of force. Clothing items hanging on hooks in none of the rooms simply feel some moist threads, even if I tried to unhook them. Yeah, okay. One thing that annoyed me was the light was becoming more sparse and unreliable as I went further into the dank, suffocating depths of the place. Eventually, I reached a black and yellow striped door with the words Character Prep 1 st Stenciled on it? I think it says stencil. Yeah. The door wouldn't open at first. I thought this is probably where the costumes were kept. And I definitely wanted the photograph of the twisted, stinking mess. Try as I might, whatever angle or trick I tried, the door wouldn't budge. That is until I gave up and started to walk away. That's when there was a slight popping sound and the door creaked open slowly. Run! Run, B, run! Don't go in! He's gonna go in. We all know it. But in this situation, run, B, run is the smart answer. Ugh. Inside the room was completely dark. Pitch black. I used a camera flash to look for a light switch in the wall by the door. There was nothing. As I made my search, I was jarred out of my senses of excitement by a loud electrical buzz. Rows of lights overhead had suddenly flashed to life, flickering and fading in and out like the rest I had passed. It took a second for my eyes to adjust, but and it seemed like the light was just going to keep getting brighter until all the bulbs exploded. But just when I thought I would reach that critical stage, the lights dimmed a bit and steadied. The room was exactly as I pictured it. Various Disney costumes hung on the wall, fully put together like the strange cartoon cadavers hung from invisible nooses. That's a sight nobody wants in their head. Thanks a lot, creepypastas. Okay, there was an entire rack of loincloths and native clothes on hangers toward the back. What I found odd, and what I wanted to photograph right away, was a Mickey Mouse costume in the center of the room. Unlike the other costumes, it was lying on its back in the center of the floor like a murder victim. The fur on the costume was rotten and shedding. 
creating bare patches. What was even odder, however, was the coloring of the costume. It was like a photo negative of the actual Mickey Mouse. Black where it should have been was... Black where he should be was white, white and... White where he should be black? Inverted photo negative colors. I'm just going to say that. And normally, his normally red overalls were light blue. The sign was off-putting enough to the point where I actually put off the photographing. To, to photographing the thing until last. How far? Was there only a few pages left? Oh, yep, this is the final page. I think there's still more to this uh, creepypasta, but kick, but this is what I got. But so, yeah, I took a picture of the costumes hanging from the walls, upward angles, downward angles, side shots to show an entire row of the frozen, putrid cartoon faces with some plastic eyes missing. Why were there eyes in the costumes in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> Draw. Then I decided to stage a shot just of one of the bed rag raggled character heads on the slick, grimy floor. I reached for the headpiece of a Donald Duck costume, carefully removed this so the thing wouldn't fall apart in my hands. As I looked into the face of the wide eyed, moldering head, a loud clattering sound made me jump with fright. I looked down at my feet, and there between my shoes was a human skull. What? Uh, okay. It had fallen out of the mascot head, shattered into pieces at me feet. Only the empty face and lower jaw remained staring up at me. I dropped the duck head immediately as you expect and moved on for the door. As I stood in the doorway, I looked back at the skull on the floor. I had to take a picture of it, you know. I had to, for any number of reasons that might seem silly, but only if you didn't think so, if you don't think it through. I need proof of what happened, especially if Disney was gonna somehow make this go away. I had no doubt in my mind from the start that even if it was just gross ne neglect, 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 negligence, Disney was responsible for this. That's when the that's when Mickey, the photo negative, opposite Mickey in the middle of the floor, started to get up. This is the part everybody knows. First sitting up and climbed it to its feet. The Mickey Mouse costume or whoever was inside of it stood there in the center of the room. Its face just made staring directly at me as it mumbled no over and over and over. Was shaking hands and violently shaking heart and legs at it. Once again, turn to jelly. I managed to lift the camera, aim at it, the opposite creature quietly sit, sizzing, sizzing at me, sizing me up. The additional camera screen displayed only dead pixels in the shape of the thing. It was a perfect silhouette of the Mickey costume as the camera moved in my unsteady hands. The dead pixels spread, marrying the screen wherever Mickey's outline moved to. The camera died, went blank, and quiet, and broken. I raised my eyes once again to the Mickey costume. Hey! It said in a hushed, per perverted, but perfectly executed Mickey Mouse voice. Wanna see my head come off? And then it takes its head off with yellow Mickey Mouse blood. How do I know this? Well, there's one more page, thank God. It started to pull its own head, working its clumsily glove-clawed fingers around its neck with impatient movements similar to a wounded man trying to pull himself free from a predator's jaws. As it worked its digits into its neck, so much blood, 
so much thick, chunky. Yo, mom! I'm reading a horror story. Not funny. So much blood. So much thick, chunky, yellow blood. I turned away as I heard snickering, tearing of cloth and flesh. Only cared about getting away. Above the door, as out of the stream, I saw the final message clawed into the metal bone with fingernails. Abandoned by God. I never got the pictures out of my camera. I never wrote the blog entry about it. After I ran from that place, fled for my sanity, if not my very life. But I knew Disney didn't want anybody to know about this place. They didn't want anyone like me getting in. They didn't want anything like that getting out. And that was the end of the story of Abandoned by Disney. Overall, it's, uh, it's old and generic in points, I suppose. But overall, probably one of my favorite old-time creepypastas. I say old-time because this is what I have to put into the category of the old-time creepypastas. Because this was definitely made before 2015 happened. Thank God. I do not know if I'm going to do the sequel Room Zero or Corrupt This. Uh, excuse me. Well, that's all I have for this one. I'm not going to do another one of these again, but hey. It's fun to do, and hey, it was abandoned by Disney. So, I'm out of this B. See you next time.